Daniel Dumbrill, another typical YouTube China panda bear. This is becoming incredibly common among these pro-China YouTubers. Pro-China YouTubers. I use air quotes because these morons are the ones that invented this whole pro-China and anti-China game. But let's call them what they really are. Biased and unbalanced. They say we are anti-China YouTubers. Even though we promote China in a positive light and point out some not so wonderful things. Does this make us anti-China? Of course not. This makes us honest and truthful about how things are going here in China. Don't think so? Take a look at all of these pro-China YouTubers. There seems to be a trend. Only positive videos about China and not a single negative thing. I wonder why that could be. Hmm. You can see it happening with Guelo60, Nathan Rich, Daniel Dumbrill, and even this silly father-son duo Barrett. It is obvious there is an agenda to create a divide in the community to gather Chinese nationalists behind them. You see, we didn't coin this term of anti-China or pro-China. It was them. We just shared our experiences and work to educate people in the best way that we thought possible. Daniel starts off by saying, But the reason I've never really wanted to make these videos is for a few reasons. One, I have seen pro-China or more positive China content creators, whatever you want to call them, making videos tearing apart these guys, and I thought it was really distasteful. I said, I don't ever want to do that. You're going to notice in this video that Daniel does a lot of things he says he doesn't want to do. I just want to make more positive content. You know, posting about Hong Kong for so long really drained me. He says that talking about Hong Kong drained him. Oh my gosh, talking about Hong Kong is just so tiring. That he wanted to talk about positive things. No, Daniel, you aren't fooling anyone. You made those videos because you knew that they would get views. You made those videos to gather Chinese nationalists around your channel. You did the same thing all of the other Panda Bear YouTubers are doing. Don't believe me? Look at your comment section. You have worthless drone comments on those videos saying the same thing that is on Nathan Rich's videos, Barrett's videos, Guelo 60s videos, all the same comments. Wow, you really understand China. You're so wonderful. Those are all fake. Those are copy and paste. Daniel says, well, they have a superiority complex. Of course, he's talking about Serpents at A and Bawa 86, saying that they have a superiority complex. And by me now judging them, I recognize that that might be seen as hypocritical or ironic, that now I'm judging these people and I'm trying to make myself seem better than them. And so certainly there is that risk, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> I've never seen someone be so bashful to admit that they're about to do something so ignorant. He mentions Lao 86's video where Lao 86 tries to convince people that they're living on stolen tech in China, which is true. There is evidence to this. Daniel, are you implying that China doesn't steal intellectual property? What about the debate where a state-owned media news reporter basically admits that China steals tech? on national television. I do not deny that there are um, IP infringement, there are uh, copyright issues, or there are piracy, or even theft of, of commercial, commercial secrets. I think that is um, something that has to be dealt with, and I think the Chinese government and the Chinese people, and me as an individual, uh, I think there's a consensus, uh, because without the protection of IP right, nobody, no country, no individual can, can be stronger, can develop itself. He says it just isn't true. You know, trying to convince people that they're living on stolen tech in China, even though they're leading the way in so many fields, in, in, in robotics, in uh, high-speed train, artificial intelligence. And, you know, he mentions even mentions Huawei. I mean, Huawei's 5G. That China is leading the world in things like robotics, high-speed trains, artificial intelligence, and even Huawei. Of course, he fails to mention that actually Japan leads the world in robotics, that the maglev technology used by China was well developed in Germany. That AI is developed in an effort to control people in regions like Xinjiang. And of course the favorite company of all panda bears, Huawei. A company known for stealing IP from all over the world that currently has multiple cases against them with evidence. And he even mentions 5G. That's another huge China thing that Chinese people care so much more about than Americans. Americans don't even care about 5G. I've never had a single American contact me and be like, hey, how's the 5G there in China? 
because no one cares. Of course, he fails to mention that America and Korea both announced this before China to begin with. You see, Daniel, there's a major problem here. And you and people like Barrett and Nathan Rich, all of you mention the same propaganda. It's just so predictable. But post no real sources or evidence to support the claims you are making. That's the difference between people like me and Lao 86 and Serpent ZA and people like you. We provide evidence to back our claims. We don't just blindly make them while staring into a lens. Yes, China landed on the dark side of the moon, and no one really cares. Russia landed objects on the moon 61 years ago. Okay, America put people on the moon 51 years ago. Again, pointing out a few good things doesn't change the fact that there are many bad things here happening. And when you ignore the bad and only talk about the good, you're doing the same thing as supporting the bad. And so I want to start off by saying that for foreigners or Chinese who are in China actually taking advantage of the amazing opportunities here, they're less likely to be content creators for YouTube and stuff like that. They have better things to do with their time. Now, that may say something about me, and you can say, I have a defense for that, but I don't want to get into that because I don't want to make this about me trying to seem like I'm better than them. And so if you want to assume that I, I don't have anything better to do with my time, fine. Perfect. Because that's actually besides the point. He again, of course, realizes his own irony and says, well, you will assume the same about me. That is besides the point. No, really, it isn't besides the point. You can't insult someone based upon something you are also doing. You see, Daniel, you keep making this mistake of doing this thing where you say, oh, no offense, but your mom's ugly. If you really don't mean something, don't say it. Mean what you say and say what you mean. You are the same as Nathan Rich. You think putting things out on the table beforehand is a defense for what you're about to do. Nathan thinks telling everyone he's a criminal somehow negates the fact that, well, he's a criminal. It doesn't. You blaming someone for doing the same shit you're doing is really a lot of irony. And admitting that you know it doesn't make it okay. He even insults again without naming people where they live. A lot of the stuff um, you can see from where these guys lived, they lived in the pretty poor neighborhoods of China. Are you saying Huizhou is a dump? Is that what you're saying, Daniel? The glorious China has a city that is a dump? My gosh, that's such a horrible thing. Again, this is another, I'm not saying I'm better than you, but well, I'm better than you. So wait, who here has a superiority complex again? Because it seems like you do. You're the one that's running people down for where they come from or where they lived. There seems to be this issue with the Panda Bear YouTubers where they make all kinds of claims, but post no articles, no sources of information, nothing. They're all good at making claims and attacking the character of people. I mean, even his buddy, I think, slept on the sofa of his friend's apartment for, what, the first six months he was in China. But there's never any evidence, never any videos, never any photos. They're just copying the same thing that the government has told them to say. It is just them walking around in front of a camera. I wonder why that is. Could it be because it's not true or these people are lying for their audience? I think so. So when you see them coming out of China saying things like, Oh, you know, generally speaking, Chinese kids don't brush their teeth, which I've heard them say, um, which is completely ridiculous. Keep in mind where they lived. You mentioned the kids cleaning teeth thing. Well, many kids are raised by grandparents. Grandparents in China don't always have the greatest habits. I'm sure you could agree to that. You probably wouldn't agree to it, you know, on YouTube, of course, but I'm sure in private you would, you would say things like that. You would admit it. But again, you would never say that in public about Chinese, of course. I'm sure you will say something along the lines of, well, my children don't have this issue. But there's something to understand here, Daniel. You are a foreigner, meaning that your wife is probably fairly westernized anyways. I'm sure you hold your children to a certain standard, right? Didn't you make sure that your children were born in Hong Kong? Why would you ever do that? Did you think Hong Kong was better than mainland China? Was it because Hong Kong is just more westernized? I find it funny. You fight against Hong Kong, you say they don't deserve freedoms, but yet you make sure your children are born there. Hmm, the irony again. You essentially claim that the experiences that Lao 86 had are because of where he lived. I think everyone knows that Lao 86 and Serpent ZA together, they have both been on conquering Northern China and conquering Southern China where they rode motorcycles across the country. I would imagine they probably had a lot of experiences that you've 
never had, that you would never understand, experiences that I've never had, that I would never understand. I've never rode a motorcycle across the country, so I'm sure they've seen a lot, right? I mean, after all, you live in Shenzhen, which is essentially the best of the best in China. And I mean, you live in Nanshan, which means you live in one of the nicest places in China since it's the nicest district in Shenzhen. Don't you think that could potentially warp your perspective of China? I mean, you're pretty wealthy, obviously, right? You live in one of the richest cities in China and the richest district. I'm pretty sure you could live pretty well in North Korea if you were rich and you lived in Pyongyang, right? But you can't compare that to the rest of the country. In that regard, I admit, I've lived in Shenzhen, in Shaco, I've lived here in Guangzhou, in Canton Palace, where rent starts at like 20,000 RMB a month, which is way more than the average Chinese person makes per month. You know, I've lived next to ambassadors and things like that, and admittedly so. Some of the people that live there were still, well, hmm, you know, from the countryside. As you know, many times parents move in with their kids to take care of children. So when you say that someone like, oh, Hui Zhou, well, consider this for a moment. Even a family from, say, Hui Zhou could live right next to you, Daniel, just like they lived right next to me. But it sounds to me like you think you are better than Chinese people, not from those tier one cities. It sounds like you think you are better than Lao Wei86 because he lived in Hui Zhou and you live in Shenzhen. Again, who has the superiority complex? Yeah, you're partially right. At one time, even in big cities, being a foreigner was, it was kind of a special thing. And you get out of the cities and people still act surprised even today, though. But while that has worn off some, it still isn't completely gone. It should be also mentioned that foreigners are still special in certain ways. I think anyone and everyone that has taught English in China would tell you the same thing. Of course, they made way more money than the average Chinese person. And the Chinese people want white faces. And there's a reason for that. Daniel says they are judging from a pedestal. Hmm. Kind of like you're doing, right, Daniel? Would you not agree that there are certain moral issues in China that haven't quite fully developed? Perhaps the way that people treat animals sometimes, the fact that people don't respect other people's personal space, the fact that people will kind of just eat on public transportation even, the fact that you can see people spit and hold you know, kids over a trash can while kids are taking a dump. That's stuff I've seen here. I've seen it in China. You've never seen that before? Is pointing these things out, putting yourself on a pedestal, or is it just an honest observation? But meanwhile, when these very successful and rich people brought them in under their wing and said, come with us, have dinner with us, they never judged them. Those rich people never said, well, these are foreigners who haven't really accomplished anything with their life. They accepted them as equals. You claim that these rich people took them under their wing. You're trying to build up Chinese people to make yourself sound really good in front of China, right? and treated them fair. That's what you said, that they took them under their wing and treated them fair. You see, it's the same for me. I've had same experiences many times here in China, where a person says, oh, this is my foreign friend, wah, 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 wah. And I have no idea who that person is. I've had this happen many times. I'm sure you've had this happen, right? And it's kind of strange because it's a culture thing here in China. It's crazy. Like I knew people that would just go to Ikea just to take pictures. Literally, people that go to Ikea just to take pictures. The look at me, look at me thing in China is here and alive. However, when you interact with people on that kind of a level, it's a little bit more superficial. You're not really interacting with them for business. You're not really getting into their inner circle. You're just kind of being allowed to tag along. So when they give you these perspectives, trying to convince you, that they know all aspects of Chinese life from the from the ghettos all the way up to the ultra rich. No, they don't. In, in, in those circumstances, they weren't really involved with them in a meaningful manner. You speak about getting into inner circles, but Daniel, didn't you have a partnership with a Chinese person? A Chinese person that forcefully pushed you out of the business and took over your business? Did you ever make that video? Did you ever tell the world how a Chinese guy essentially bent you over and screwed you out of your business? Let me guess. No, you didn't do that, right? Well, why not, Daniel? Isn't the truth important? Shouldn't you be worried about other business owners coming to China and losing everything? And now, I don't want to try to pretend that my Chinese is perfect or great or anything like that, but I, I know enough of my kids speak Chinese fluently where I can say the Chinese level that they were showing was probably around like a seven or eight-year-old, and the pronunciation was like probably similar to my two-and-a-half or three-year-old. 
I guess not. Daniel continues on with this no offense but type scenario where he says, I don't want to pretend my Chinese is perfect, but... But what, Daniel? Say what you mean and mean what you say. Daniel basically implies his Chinese is better than that Y86. I don't know why. Who really cares? You know, perhaps he wants to portray himself of this image of, Well, I'm a better source of information because of my Chinese level. Not quite sure why he cares. But I was under the impression that Lao Y86's Chinese is pretty good, right? Are you saying that it's really bad? Do you have, like, evidence of this? I don't know. To be fair, I don't think any foreigners really walk up to Chinese people and have insanely complex conversations on video anyways. Most of us are here living our life. We don't feel the need to prove how amazing our Chinese is. You even admit your only video of you speaking Chinese is not impressive either. So why are you throwing stones in a glass house? You even mention how someone gave you a positive comment on your Chinese. This is so self-centered. In China, you could walk up to people and be like, Oh, ni hao, wo jiao dong xiao ping. And people will act like you're amazing. You know, that your Chinese is amazing when it isn't anything difficult at all. Also, you're a panda bear. I wouldn't take what your nationalist Chinese viewers say so serious. They will give you compliments on anything and everything because, well, you say what they want to hear. You know, he mentions the Hong Kong riots, how Hong Kong students come to Shenzhen, which is a really silly point to try and make since, you know, uh, rich Shenzhen families send their kids over the border into Hong Kong every single morning for school. Again, you made sure your children were born in Hong Kong. Is this in a double standard or something by you? It seems like it is, because on the surface, you're really pro-China, right? But in real life, you made sure your kids were born in Hong Kong. And everyone knows that actions speak louder than words. Also, I think these comments that you panda bears are making of, well, you don't live in China anymore. So what? Are you implying that news outlets can't report on other places, things and people if they don't live there? That the experience of living here in China for all these years just means nothing? That's a silly way of thinking. To say that someone that lived here for maybe 10 years, that what they say doesn't matter? You don't have to eat shit to know this shit tastes bad. Let's be honest. In that same video of the review of 2019, he said something like, oh guys, I still have hundreds of friends in China that I speak to on a regular basis. And for me, that sounded like a plea for people to believe that he still has a relevant opinion on China. When whether he ever had a relevant opinion on China is debatable. I mean, who's really on the pedestal here? You're, you're saying that someone's opinion of a place never really mattered? My gosh. You know, and I also like that smug look on your face when you said it. It was like you just won a cookie or something. It was really nice, actually. I think you can see, I think his nickname is Sea Milk, right? And I think it's perfect because it's exactly what you can see him doing now. You can see him milking this for, for everything he can get. That's probably a lame joke, but whatever. I like how you also act like you didn't know him or something. That was really funny, too. Like, you just didn't know his name. And then I like at the end where you kind of backed off a little to not make yourself look like such a dick. But all things said and done, Daniel. Daniel Dumbrill is just another one of these foreigners that is, well, saying good things about China because he has a reason. You see, Daniel owns Taps, a restaurant in Shenzhen, a restaurant that is located in Coco Park, a place where pretty much all foreigners in Shenzhen go and Chinese girls basically look for white guys. It's kind of strange, actually. And that is okay. I can't blame anyone for being successful. But Daniel's protecting his business. He knows that saying negative things about China could ruin his business. Again, money is important, more important than his word, more important than his morals. And again, you can't say that you know so much about China when you live in Shenzhen and uh, you spend all your time at Coco Park because uh, it's the least Chinese place pretty much in China. You know, uh, Shenzhen is easily one of the whitest, you know, places in China, especially uh, where, where your restaurant is located. So Daniel sort of talks down to Sea Milk and Serpent said, hey, but I thought Serpent said did a subscriber meet up there and brought business to Daniel. What a horrible thing to do. Someone brings business to you and instead you talk bad about them on the internet. I don't quite understand that really. You were good enough to take the money when they did a subscriber meet up and helped you, but for some reason you talk shit about them online? Hmm, strange. But most importantly, this pro-China, anti-China thing was created by you guys. None of us ever said anything about being pro-China or anti-China. We never had an agenda. We simply reported what we saw and put the video out to prove it. 
The same can't be said for you guys. You guys have to quit this stupid agenda of pandering to Chinese people just for views. You need to get fair and balanced and make videos about what is really happening in China. Prime in China, like, comment, subscribe.